Well, hello. I am out here today with my electric snowboard. I am trying to do a ride and cook, which is to ride this thing a little bit into uh, this area and uh, sit down and cook a lunch. But uh, I'm actually having a bit of a problem right now in that the snow is packing snow. It's an improvement from before where it would just outright stop, but it's really slowing it down and uh, it's giving me trouble trying to actually go anywhere. So if I get on this thing and try and get going, you can see it's really struggling. Yeah, packing snow is really this thing's arch nemesis. As you can see, this is a very slow and painful process. Just any excuse I can to take this thing out to ride it. Well, that brings today's adventure to a close. Part of my wheel broke right off. Same exact failure mode as the last time. It just split pretty much right where it sits up against the uh, upper part of the rim. So it was a bit of a struggle this way, but I think we're, we've been on an uphill. So hopefully on the way back, it's downhill. And I have enough tread, it should still be rideable. Uh, I guess we're gonna find out. Let's see how far I made it in before I had that failure. Yeah, we only made it uh, 600 meters. So I'll turn around. There's a little spot over that way where it's a good spot to sit and make some lunch. Yeah, this is exactly why I haven't taken this thing on any crazy trips yet. Is, uh, you know, I've worked out most of the immediate issues, but uh, you know, that wheel and the ABS still not the most durable thing in the world. All right, electric snowboard with a half broken wheel. See how well this does. Yeah, so we're uh, we're doing much. Whoa, hello! I just hit that rock, <laughs> and that threw me for a bit of a loop. <laughs> much of the soft stuff here to be able to do anything but this is the uh the open spot i was talking about i can tuck in back there out of the wind and find a good place to have some lunch right around here seems like a good spot i think yeah nice and tucked out of the way stomp this down down my ground sheet and we got ourselves a nice little uh, area to sit and make some lunch here. Look at that. Already pre-packaged for me to sit down. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Let's dig out cooking supplies. Fuel and alcohol for the stove, cook pot, very important, and my food bag. Oh, actually, I haven't filled this up. Hopefully, I can find something tasty in here to cook. <laughs> yeah, there's a huge difference between being in the wind and being out of the wind. And that's one thing I always try and push if people are out camping in winter. If you could stay out of the wind, like not even a slight breeze, all oh, you'll be doing so much better. That's the secret. To winter camping stay out of the wind and stay dry okay what do we got here i think we're gonna have a double helping of noodles because i uh forgot to actually fill this up 
And I actually went and bought a uh, backpacker meal that was on sale to bring out here to cook for this. And uh, I forgot it in the car. <laughs> Good job, Mike. So my little setup involves a little titanium alcohol stove. Get it nice and stable. Then we put the uh, thing on. And we put the fuel in. We got a cook pot. Pre-fill it with some water. Uh, now we light this baby. Ferro rod. Take a second, uh, wind's blowing against me. I probably shouldn't be breathing in the fumes. And this is a very, very large pot, not appropriately sized for this. So we have to be very careful. Just like that. Move you away. Oh, hello. And now we play the waiting game. So the electric snowboard is just one of many wacky DIY electric rideable projects that uh, I have built and I'm planning on building. And truth be told, I run this YouTube channel at a loss. All these things that I build cost me a lot more money than what my YouTube channel actually makes. And that just fell again. Of course it did. I've already had to refill this thing with water because it toppled over and drained. So in order to help fund future DIY projects, I've actually started a uh, fundraiser. Now, obviously this is just for a stupid electric rideable project. It's not anything important, but if you want to help, you know, fund the next project, uh, go ahead and jump over to the uh, link in the description. The next project as chosen by you guys via poll is a long range and reliable lithium iron phosphate powered electric skateboard it's going to use six inch airless all-terrain tires and 1.8 kilowatt hours of lfp batteries so if you want to see that thing get built and taken on backpacking trips by all means chuck five bucks at it yeah you can tell how much the snow is packing down today because of how much has accumulated on my poor little traction pad in the back and on the wheel I'm not like sliding off because I think having that super aggressive traction pad in the back actually helps with that. But yeah, this, the packing snowman is this thing's worst nightmare. That and soft powder. It's, uh, it's unfortunate that it has to be like the uh, Goldilocks of snow in order for this thing to ride properly. It can be powder, but it has to have something dense underneath for the wheel to bite into. And it can't really be packing snow or else it gums everything up. And I, I widened the gap in between the wheel and the uh, board so that the packing snow isn't as much of an issue as it was when I was testing last year, but it's still, you know, causing problems. Let that sit for a few minutes. Unfortunately, I think this thing's gonna get cold before it uh, actually fully softens up the noodles. So I'll put a bit more alcohol in the stove here and uh, we're just gonna run it for another couple minutes. And uh, in order to avoid spilling it like I did before, I had the idea to use the lid of my pot as a platform for it to sit. And that way it's not gonna tip over as easily as it did before. I'll put this right back on. Actually, it's not a bad idea. Part of the problem is that when I'm trying to put the pot on, it's really hard to tell how centered it is on the small burner. But by using the lid as a platform for it, not only does that make it a lot more stable of something to sit on, but it also helps me line up the pot. So that's, uh, that's part of what's fun about getting out here is uh, you always learn something fun and exciting. <laughs> like how to properly position a cooking pot, apparently. So obviously it needs some tweaking, but I'm honestly really happy with how this electric snowboard project turned out. All right, this is looking pretty good. Yeah, so I think we'll take this off and go like this. So we'll let that burn itself out. 
And in the meantime, let's eat us some noodles. Unfortunately, that sodium ion battery did not produce as much range as I was hoping. It's exactly like a standard lead acid battery where once it gets to about the half charge mark, it just dumps its ability to actually generate meaningful power to push something forward. So I can use the pack I already built. I can get about seven kilometers out of that. And by stuffing the rest of the battery container full of uh, my lithium ion batteries, I should in theory be able to safely get about 30 kilometers. You really gotta eat fast in uh, winter because stuff cools down super fast. It's so caught up in the hustle and bustle of daily life that I don't really spend the time and think about what it's like to be out here until I'm actually out here. It's really a good way to de-stress. I mean, obviously with stuff like the electric snowboard and my electric skateboard, when I'm on actual distance trips with those things, I gotta worry about charging. I gotta worry about where I'm spending the night. But in the moment when I'm actually on trail and riding, it just, it gives me such a sense of freedom, knowing I've got everything in my backpack that I could possibly need to survive for the next few days. And the power of the board to move me quite a lot of distance. And that's part of what I try to show with these sorts of trips is how useful they can be as ways to actually get out and explore and actually do crazy cross-country trips. I mean, things haven't exactly been smooth on my channel. I'm kind of at the cutting edge of DIY projects with this and the sodium ion battery. But when I cut back on the experimental stuff and go with what's known and what's proven, we can get some pretty crazy distances. I actually ran a poll recently uh, and asked you guys what things that you've really gotten from my channel. The options were, did you learn that EVs were a lot more capable than you originally thought? Did I show you guys new and interesting ways to use EVs? And the last one was, are you guys actually more interested in going on adventures with your own EV? And of course, by EV, I mean both stuff like my Tesla Model 3, but also stuff like on the small scale, my electric snowboard, my electric skateboard, etc. And I did have a significant portion of people answer that nothing's really changed in their opinion, but only a third. The rest had at least something gained from my channel in terms of their perception of electric vehicles and electric rideables. So that tells me, although my channel's pretty small, I am helping move the needle on public perception. So that really warms the soul and uh, gives me some motivation to keep doing what I'm doing. So that wraps up this one. I'm gonna pack everything up and uh, hit the trail and limp my poor electric snowboard back to the car. And I'll catch you guys next week.